I'm Ernest Frankel, and I'm a professor at MIT in the Department of Biological Engineering. And my research focuses on finding new ways to understand and to cure diseases. We're interested in taking advantage of a revolution that's occurred in technology that allows us to probe much more deeply into all the molecules that are present in the cell and how those molecules change in various disease states. And so we use those technologies to look at samples from uh, patients, to look at uh, models of disease, and really get at a mechanism of disease in a way that was never possible before. And this is complete change for biology, which previously was really focused on single proteins and single genes and understanding what that single protein does in some disease state. Now when you're faced with 10,000 or 20,000 molecules, one needs an entirely new approach to figure out what is really important among all the changes that you see. And to do that, we rely on technologies from machine learning um, that have been developed in many different contexts, some of it for uh, marketing, some of it for telecommunications, to take that vast majority of the data and really uh, zoom in on the molecules that uh, need to be understood and uh, um, to be targeted to develop therapies. Machine learning is uh, a new area of computer science that tries to um, do some of the inference that people would do on data but to do it on a much larger scale. And so it tries to look for patterns of the data. People are very good at detecting patterns, perhaps a little bit too good. We find patterns even when they don't exist. Machine learning tries to do that in a very robust, reliable way um, and provides us with techniques for finding signal among the data. One thing you might consider is when you go online and try to shop for something, um, a lot of these online services seem to anticipate what you want to buy or what movie you want to watch. Um, and how do they do that? Well, they take a lot of data about you, everything that you've clicked on over the whole lifetime of using that browser, um, things that you've purchased from their site before, and they find patterns in that to try to anticipate what kinds of things will appeal to you. Um, those pattern recognition algorithms can also be used in many different contexts, and so we use them to find patterns in the data that relate to disease. We see lots of changes, regardless of what you do to a cell or what um, uh, condition the person is in when you take cells out of body, you'll see changes in the proteins and their genes. And the magnitude of these changes is huge, but buried in there is some signal that's specific to the disease. In a similar way, you know, your browsing history is incredibly complicated, but in there is some signal that tells the, uh, the retailer that you'd be interested in this book or this movie. We're hoping that in uh, the medium term we can turn some of the tools that are right now uh, research tools into tools that can be used easily by a wide range of researchers in industry. Ways of making all these tools much more accessible to the people who need to apply them um, in diverse uh, settings. The vision going forward ultimately is that um, a lot of this technology could be automated. Many of the uh, data collection techniques right now involve a lot of labor. Um, there are technicians in the lab who have to work pretty hard to collect all the thousands and thousands of data points, be they from uh, gene expression or small molecules or proteins. But ultimately, I think a merger of some of the technologies that we use in computer science and also microfluidics and other technologies could really create uh, a platform where patient samples are brought in, analyzed in an extremely high throughput way, mostly automated way, that gather the data that allow one to make the hypotheses, um, that then could be used by scientists to go further. And so trying to speed up that whole process from patient sample to hypothesis uh, is really something we hope to see in the near future.